Come here. Okay, go around next to you. Yeah, so I think um, as a player, it, it, it's been a great year. Um, I think you've seen um, probably an all-round improvement of, of players, but probably both physically and from a, a skill point of view. Um, going professional didn't necessarily allow us um, much more time. Obviously, we, we have had increased time, but not like... A, a staggering amount of time. I think what it's allowed us to do is the quality of the session, whether that be um, in the gym or on the field, um, enhance the learning and, and what, what we're doing. And um, probably because we've got time to recover fully, that the quality of what we can can go and then do it has probably been the, the biggest thing. And then from an individual point of view, just probably the recovery your body has and. Um, probably more of a, a, an ageing player, that's probably really crucial. Um, but also not just from a physical point of view, but from a mental point of view. So like there's actual downtime to, to switch off from, from rugby um, as well. So actually when you, when you come back to rugby, you, you're, you're not distracted by other, other things going on that maybe once was when we had to balance a, a full-time job as well. I think obviously over over recent times it moved more to, towards um, towards female officials and um, we've seen like the the work and the development that's gone into um, female officials uh, and to, to to develop them and, and it, it's great for women's sport to see that actually um, on or off the field that um, we're we're really trying to, to push that in and. Yeah, I mean, it's from when I probably first started, I don't think there was many, if if any, female officials now. But you see, it's a career, so obviously you've got the likes of Joy Neville, Sarah Cox, um, uh, that are making it, are making it a living a professional, and, and that's fantastic about where we where we've moved the the sport to. Um, and f for me, I don't really look to see whether they're they're male or female. It's more about the ref, have we had them before, what traits do they have, how they refereed other games. So, so those are the sorts of the, the bits of detail we, we look at um, about our referee rather than their, than their gender. Uh, I, think, I think what it, it probably does, it, it, it means you've got to be you know, really prepared going into the competition, which we always try to be, but uh, it, it's quite a nutritional uh, competition as the Six Nations, obviously it runs over the best part of uh, two months, uh, and you tend to build your performance as you go in, uh, I think that's, a, that's the nature of the competition, but particularly when the scenario is like this, it's, you, you've got to be ready, uh, you know, it's, it, it's an old phrase, but you've got to you're literally at the ground running. Uh, so yeah, we've uh, we've been confident in our preparation. We had, we've had really good. We've had some good, good quality time together, as Sarah said. And uh, physically, we're in you know we're in good shape. So uh, a little bit of fine tuning to go over the next week, and then we'll we'll go out. And obviously, we've we've had a couple of recent experiences of playing France. Uh, one of them playing in France, and, and it was a good experience for us. Uh, at the same time, you know, they they came back to Exeter and and had a really good performance, and we're very unlucky not to win the game. So you know they'll they'll be they'll be as confident, I think, as as we probably feel. Yeah, oh, yeah, no. Um, like you look forward to to big games, and um, no better way to to kick off the tournament. Um, really, uh, and mid said it. I think we're we're now just chomping at the bit to to get out there and get the competition started. Yeah, France certainly do uh, do games well for for the women's side, and uh, it's usually a very patriotic uh, crowd, um, if not a bit hostile. But you know, we we start to really thrive in those em environments, and it, it's fantastic for for the women's game to to see just how much support they they do generate. And we we started to develop a bit of a yeah. a, a red rose travelling uh, fan base that doesn't just include um, sort of 
family and friends. So it, it, obviously the game is, is massively growing growing now. So um, to have a few uh, St George's flags out there is always nice to see. Yeah, so I think for, for us, we can just focus on where, uh, obviously, the, the RFU, our union, wants to, to keep pushing us and progressing us. And I think we saw it from last year, yet um, teams are progressing and um, are putting more time and money into it. You, you saw that by um, the games that have been played in the autumn. I think all home nations um, had autumn um, fixtures. A lot of them have had pre-warm-up games for this. Um, and by some of the results last year like the tournament is is progressing so um obviously we will keep pushing us and we've got had fantastic support of the rfu to to allow us to be professional and all the support that comes with that and yeah we focus on that and hope that other unions will will follow in and and keep pushing this this great game and great tournament um onwards really I think it's difficult to say. Um, obviously, that's why Will Rugby are probably in charge and, and Six Nations are, are looking at where it, it's best placed. Um, you could probably have an argument for, for both. Like, uh, Is it alongside because that's when it is? Does it work better? Um, I think what the great thing is, uh, look, hopefully looking at the, the women's world calendar as a as a whole and looking how it can best fit for for the good of the game and you know as players and probably staff is like we you tell us when we're we're going to play and we'll we'll play it really